Welcome back. Some good news for a family in the Camp Road area. 14-year-old Stephanie Mackey of Camp Road, who was reported missing on Tuesday afternoon and had been missing since Sunday, July 16th, has been located thanks to the Marcos Alert System. Many of you would have been notified Tuesday afternoon shortly before 6 p.m. when the blaring alarm of Marcos Alert was triggered informing of a missing teen girl. Well, a little more than an hour later, police reissued the missing person poster, notifying the media that young Mackie was found and is in good condition. We have heard the term that when the United States sneezes, the Bahamas catches a cold, meaning that whatever trend is happening in the United States, we can expect to feel the effects here in the Bahamas at some point. Well, a tide that experts hope does not turn our way is the current opioid crisis happening in the United States. We hear from a mother whose son unexpectedly died from opioid use despite not having previous history of drug use. Kale Campbell has more in this next report. My son Dre, I have never ever seen my son take a pill from the day he was born to him leaving home. Even when in pain, getting his braces, um, headache, I would say, come baby, take a pound of all. He said, no, mommy, I'll ride it out. He hated, he hated pills. So I don't understand. <laughs> that was Andrea Johnson Thompson, the grieving mother of Andre Thompson, who passed away in August of last year from a fentanyl overdose. Ms. Johnson Thompson explaining that, while she does not know when her son swallowed a fentanyl pill allegedly given to him by a female acquaintance during a night out, what she does know is that night would ultimately be Andre's undoing as Andre passed away in his home, just a few steps from the apartment where his mother and other four brothers lived. Now this mother has joined forces with other mothers to fight against the use of fentanyl. Now, consultant psychiatrist and substance misuse specialist Dr. Kirk Christie, National Director of Addiction Services for the Bahamas, explains how Andre's life could have been saved by an opiate antagonist called intranasal naloxone, otherwise known as Narcon. If intranasal Narcon was available, it could have saved his life. And certainly, um, it is incumbent upon us, all of the um, intersectorial collaborators to, to now move to get the intranasal Narcan available, especially on the ambulances. The armed forces should have it, the, um, the community clinics or community clinics, ambulance rehabilitation center, community counseling and, a, uh, and assessment center, the prison, um, uh, Bahamas Department of Corrections and even per laypersons, pastors and civic leaders should have it. The administration of Sandalance um, Re Rehabilitation Center. I've spoken with other persons in the community, um, the head of ambulance services, and expressed my concerns so that it is, it is made available in the community. But I would like to, to, to say that we also need self-awareness and hence the goal of this press release is that every Bahamian educates himself and herself about the hazardous effects of not only illegal fentanyl, but also prescription um, drugs, um, also alcohol. Alcohol can be lethal if you ingest and you binge drinking, um, you could end up um, with lethality or um, fatality. Dr. Christie goes on to explain the dangers of drug dealers cutting both non and prescription drugs with fentanyl in efforts to make a profit. The issue with fentanyl is that, you know, the drug dealers are not paying attention Usually fentanyl is cut, you know, one part to a hundred parts if they're adding whatever additive they're using, a adulterant, but, you know, they're rushing and then if the batch dose is already overdosed, um, the, that individual pill will be greater, it will maybe two milligrams or greater, and that's a lethal dose. And hence that's why we say two milligrams of illegal fentanyl can kill you. So one pill um, can kill you. There, there are other issues with um, so with the security forces, especially um, if the pill, if water spills on the pill, they are also at risk. The administration of Sandalands um, Re Rehabilitation Center. I've spoken with other persons in the community, um, the head of ambulance services, and expressed my concerns so that it is, it is made available in the community. But I would like to, to, to say that we also need self-awareness and hence 
the goal of this press release is that every Bahamian educates himself and herself about the hazardous effects of not only illegal fentanyl, but also prescription um, drugs, um, also alcohol. Alcohol can be lethal if you ingest and you binge drinking, um, you can end up um, with lethality or um, fatality. Now, Ms. Johnson Thompson says she wants to raise the alarm and warn other parents about what she sees is a pending epidemic. I just want mothers to know we can't be with our children 24-7. <clears throat> and when our adult children move on, they think they're ready to leave home. We don't know. We don't know who they're hanging with. We don't know where they're going. But um, God has allowed me to know a lot of details concerning my son's passing. So it is my prayer, my fervent prayer, my continued prayer. I will not stop until justice is served for my son. It won't bring him back. But I have four younger sons who are suffering. They can't believe Trey is gone. They are hurting. And my pain is exacerbated because I, not only did I lose Trey, and so suddenly he was snatched from me. My four other sons are in so much pain, and I can't take their pain away. For JCN News, I'm Kale Campbell. Thanks for that report, Kale. The Ministry of Tourism, Investments and Aviation recently hosted a pivotal stakeholders meeting at the British Colonial Hilton to address the current state and future development of the downtown area here in Nassau. Led by Senator Randy Roll, the meeting brought together key business owners and authorities operating in downtown Nassau to discuss and collaborate on revitalization efforts. Senator Randy Roll informed of improvements already made to infrastructure and security of the downtown area, including a greater presence of police, patching of potholes, and fixing drainage issues already addressed. Maya Nottage, Regional Marketing Manager at Nassau Cruise Port, discussed the port's plans to assist local entrepreneurs with advertising their brands within the port space. Giovanni Morse, project manager for the Downtown Nassau Partnership, reminded of the impending legislature meant to assist in maintaining and improving Nassau. He said the new legislation uh, would effectively address issues that currently plague the city, such as crime, derelict buildings, and garbage issues. It will ensure that Nassau is sustained as a world-class destination. The Church of God of Prophecy, particularly their Caribbean and Atlantic Ocean branches, are hosting their Caribbean Leadership Conference. Bishop Dr. Woodley Thompson spoke on the decision to move the conference to Freeport, Grand Bahama. Uh, one of the reasons why we moved to Grand Bahama is because we recognize the challenges that that island has faced. And so as a church, as a body, we felt that we can play a small part by hosting our conference there and have an impact on that community. In terms of the second core value that this particular conference will target and that of service. And so with service, we are going to do our best to impact that community. And there's a highlight during this conference. We're going to do a particular project where delegates will be invited to go to a senior member's home and do some renovations in terms of sprucing up the outside. They're going to paint up and just try to help this individual be encouraged in her life and in her family. And so we want to have a tangible impact on that community. Speaking on behalf of the youth, Minister Jewel Dawkins expands on what attendees can look forward to. There is tons of leadership development nuggets. This is not a conference that is going to be one like the others. We do believe that the Spirit of God is going to empower our speakers to empower us as leaders and future and upcoming leaders in the Church of God of Prophecy in the Caribbean. Also, there will be sessions that focus on discipleship. How do we prepare the next generation of leaders? Focusing on the family. Sessions geared specifically toward young adults. And you know, those young persons that are watching, you know when we get together, the conversations are lit. 
So yes, there will be a segment specific just to us. And then we have an opportunity for the young people from the Caribbean to display their talent and connect with each other, not only in terms of sharing talent, but also sharing best practices, things that work in other youth ministries that we can learn from and glean from. Bishop Dr. Franklin Ferguson spoke on the Church of God of Prophecy's role in the Caribbean. He says the church can only be effective when it is prepared to get involved with the changing environment of the local ministry. Uh, the Church of God of Prophecy is in seven regions of the world covered by uh, seven presbyters. And in every region of the world over the last several years, uh, we have seen an increase in crime, we've seen an increase in, in uh, domestic violence, we've seen an increase in demands for various things. And the Church uh, of God of Prophecy is endeavoring to respond to all of these in conferences such as these. These conferences started in the early 80s uh, and they've expanded a whole lot, covering a much wider area every year. And so uh, I think those in attendance uh, will, can expect to leave the conference uh, more informed with better, better approaches, better methodologies that they can take back to their local churches. Under the theme, Come Journey with Jesus, the conference will be held at the Grand Lucan Resort in Freeport starting today, July 19th. And finally, Dr. Diane Gail Saunders, a noted Bahamian historian, archivist, author, and former athlete, will be laid to rest in a state-recognized funeral service on Friday, July 21st. The body of Dr. Saunders will be lying in repose in Sweet B at Bethel Brothers Mortician tomorrow, that's Thursday, July 20th, between 9 a.m. and 12 noon. Dignitaries, including Governor General Sir Cornelius A. Smith, Prime Minister Philip Davis, Cabinet Ministers, and members of the official opposition will pay their respects, sign the Book of Condolences, and greet immediate family members of Dr. Saunders. Meanwhile, viewing for the general public begins at 12.30 p.m. until 5 p.m. The state-recognized funeral will be held at Christ Church Cathedral, George Street, beginning at 11 a.m. Dr. Saunders passed away on June 30th at the age of 79. That'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jerino Saunders. Thanks for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.